Admiral's Log, May 16th, 1903. The war with Japan, a turbulent chapter in our nation's history, has finally drawn to a close. Yet, the conclusion of this conflict has not brought the solace we had hoped for. Our merchant navy, once the lifeblood of Russian trade and economy, now lies in tatters, leaving behind a wake of economic devastation that ripples through our motherland. In these trying times, our shipyards, once bustling with the construction of vessels destined to bolster our naval strength, now find themselves in a peculiar quandary. The dire need to rejuvenate the economy has steered their focus towards building battleships and warships for export, a venture far removed from our initial vision. Canada, seeking to expand its naval capabilities, has become an unexpected benefactor in these efforts, providing a crucial financial lifeline. However, this shift in priorities comes at a cost, one that weighs heavily on my heart. The dream of modernizing the Russian Navy, a vision I have held close since the dawn of my command, now seems like a distant mirage. The necessity of stabilizing our economy has eclipsed the imperative of naval research and development. The funds once earmarked for innovation and advancement are now diverted to the exigencies of economic recovery. The cessation of research is a bitter pill to swallow. Each day, I walk the decks of our aging fleet, a stark reminder of what could have been. The cutting-edge technologies and revolutionary designs that I envisioned remain unexplored, confined to the realm of imagination. The irony is palpable. In our quest to salvage the economy, we have inadvertently stalled the very modernization that could secure our future naval supremacy. As I pen this log, I am torn between the demands of the present and the aspirations for the future. The path to modernizing our Navy, once clear and unobstructed, now seems fraught with obstacles. Yet, the resilience of the Russian spirit is not easily quelled. Though our research may be halted, our resolve remains steadfast. The challenges we face are but temporary setbacks in the grand tapestry of our naval history. For now, necessity dictates our course, yet I hold on to the hope that one day, we shall resume our journey towards a modern, formidable Russian Navy. Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to the Russian Campaign, Episode 5. It's been about a year since I last left you. We ended up in February 1902, it is now May 1903. The war with Japan ended, well, rather unspectacularly. I was able to get some money out of them, but, well, they're still a major power over here. And uh, they did leave me with a financial problem. Not directly, but indirectly. Because during the war, they were able to sink a whole bunch of my transport capability. My merchant navy took a big, big, big hit. And this means that I've been bending, well, as much of my transport capability as possible. It's taken a while, unfortunately so. Um, I only have two battleships left. Because... I'm not sure what Canada is plotting, but it is not good. Because all of my battleships are either getting sold to Canada, are getting ordered by Canada, or are somehow getting transported to Canada. They now have two battleships over here in Vancouver. They got two in Eskimalt. Over here on the eastern seabed, they have the St. John has one battleship. There's a torpedo boat, uh, sorry, two torpedo boats and a DD there. And Quebec also has a battleship. And they're not done yet. Because I am currently, well, I don't know, basically arms dealing for Canada. All of these orders, all of my shipyards are working on orders for Canada. It's a battleship. It's another three battleships. It's two torpedo boats and it's three heavy cruisers. I'm not sure if Canada is planning to... I don't know, launch an attack against the US Navy. But at this point, I believe they have about eight battleships, which is actually more battleships than the United States. So I'm not sure what Canada's plotting, but I'm really looking forward to seeing exactly how it's going to pay out. Now, over the time, I have not been able to do much beyond try and recover from this economic disaster that happened over here. 
We still have not regained Kamchatka, which is also a decent chunk of income. And, well, I don't really see a way of getting an invasion here at all. I'm not sure if the game considers southern Siberia to be connected to this peninsula, which is part of Kamchatka. So it's possible that we can walk over, I don't know, some of the 51,000 population from southern Siberia to Kamchatka, but I don't think I'll win. A naval invasion is unlikely because Petropavlovsk is a neutral power, or rather a port of a neutral power, and just parking ships there generally doesn't do anything. So what have I been doing? Well, I've been building battleships for the Canadians, and I've been rebuilding my transport capability. <clears throat> this has been going okay. I'm also working on a little bit of tech. I'm trying not to fall too far behind. And, uh, well, research is not exactly progressing quickly. We can expect a new hull construction upgrade in about 15 years. So that's going to take a while. And I'm hopeful that one ploy is going to be able to get my finances or financial situation back on track. You see, I have been provoking the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Why them? They had the least <laughs> popular opinion of me. Um, I thought, you know, if I push these guys into a war by increasing tensions, I can get a cold war. Now, what does that mean? It means that um, over here, at least, I am so far removed from the Austro-Hungarians that it's not likely to impact me at all. Over here in the Black Sea, it is possible that we're going to see some conflict, but again, still rather unlikely, because the uh, Austro-Hungarian Navy, which is sizable, they got battleships, they got torpedo boats, they got a whole load of cruisers, it is possible that they will try and make it to the Black Sea. In such a situation, I'm going to throw out a couple of destroyers, mine the ports, and keep the Black Sea for myself, all the while gaining a whole bunch of money. Because once you go to war, your budget increases by a very substantial margin. So, building out a cold war like this is going to be, at least for now, my hoped-for solution to financial worries. There is, however, a cost. Because it does mean that at some point I am going to get more unrest, I'm going to get less naval prestige, and if the unrest due to unfavorable wars, well, spirals out of control, I am going to be left potentially with no admiral in office, i.e. I will be fired. Now, let's see, at a press conference you were asked about recent evidence that foreign espionage targets our navy. <laughs> There's not a whole lot that they can learn from my navy. I can ignore the questions for more unrest, or I can refer the matter as constructed rumor for internal political games. Less naval prestige, less unrest. Um, yeah, why not piss off the United States while I'm at it? Norway is dealing with the Austro-Hungarians. Ooh, minus five. We're getting exactly to where I want to go, which is more and more and more attention. We're now at 92, and uh, you can only do this about once every two months. So let's keep ticking these guys off and see what happens. And here we are. Austro-Hungarian Empire has sent us a telegraph which clearly threatens us for war, accusing us for the latest warm incidents in our common borders. You're going to have to take a map and point out those common borders, and I'll be very interested. Um, the situation is that we can either say our patience is over, or I can just give them, oh, I don't know, 56 million and uh, restore relationships. No, absolutely not. We are going to go to war. Now, this does have some spillover effects. I'm going to get a better relationship with France. I'm going to get a better relationship with the Brits. Uh, worse with Germany, worse with the US, worse with the Italians, worse with Japan, and the Spanish, and some boost with the Chinese. So, the tensions increase, the spillover has happened, and we now have an actual war. A cold war, however, as far as I'm concerned, because I now get 35 million a month to play around with. Now, um, I am, as I was looking at the map, somewhat mistaken. We do have a common border, because eastern Poland and, to some extent, Ukraine border the provinces of Galicia and Hungary. It is possible that, at some point, the ground forces are going to take a little adventure. I'm not sure what is going to happen, because it is something I simply cannot control. 
If it is possible for my forces to walk over into, I don't know, Bohemia, Moravia, or Galicia, or Hungary, I welcome it. Because conquering one of these provinces is going to give you such a massive economic advantage that you can claw yourself out of any financial gap. For now, though, what am I going to do with 35 million? Well, I'm going to increase my funding. I'm going to get more transports built. I'm going to get this transport capacity over 100% and just keep going. We have to get this back up. When it comes to crew training, I'll increase it somewhat. Tech budget, again, somewhat, not a whole lot. And I want to start building a couple of new ships. If there's going to be a conflict, it is likely going to be in the Black Sea. So this is the area where I'm going to need more ships. And considering what I can build, I think the Arkangels are interesting to have. And potentially a couple of the Zvonkis. Because these DDs have, at least in my book, already proven themselves. And, well, so have the Comrade Cats. These cruisers, especially the Europa, has done exceedingly well. So once I get, let's say, one of these, or maybe two of these, I refit them to the 1900 variants, or potentially a later upgrade. Although, well, I haven't really researched a whole lot, so there's not exactly that many upgrades to be had. I can get some ships in the Black Sea and get a bit more capacity. So let's get a couple of Arkhangelsk. And I want a couple of these Zvonkis. Let's say I want to have another five. We're going to park these in various ports. So let's say Odessa and Sevastopol. These ships are going to take a while to build. I'm going to have one cruiser and three DDs in the port of Odessa. I'm going to have the others. Can I unselect them, please? Thank you. These four... I'm holding control as I'm selecting them, by the way. I want to have these four in the port of Sevastopol. So it's going to take a while to get up to more military strength over here. It is not something I really expect to have a problem with. Let's see, is Turkey allied with anybody? Because they do control the Bosporus Strait. And that is definitely a factor in allowing or not allowing ships through here. But I think Turkey is currently not allied with anybody. The Ottoman Empire, as they're currently called, don't seem to hold any particularly warm feelings for any power. This makes them neutral, so they haven't blocked it either. It is possible for the Austro-Hungarian Navy to show up in the Black Sea, and once they do, we're going to give them a warm welcome. Right, so the plan... <sighs> might backfire. I have a few issues. One, the Austro-Hungarian Navy at large is coming to me. Here's their advance party, two light cruisers, two destroyers. And here's their main body, three heavies, well, four heavy cruisers, three battleships, five light cruisers, two destroyers, and 24 torpedo boats. Don't tell the Kamchatka. Um, and there's another 14 heavy cruisers and five TBs behind that. Where are they going? Well, I guess they're going sightseeing through the Sea of Japan all the way to the Sea of Okotsk. Um, yeah, nice. That's one problem. Two is the land forces. See, over here, they're launching an invasion from Bohemia Moravia into eastern Poland. This one mainly seems to be under control, although I have taken some staggering losses. The situation is much more concerning over here. There's not one, but two invasions happening simultaneously. One coming from Galicia, the other one coming from Hungary. I don't have the forces. I simply don't. The defenders over here are getting a little overwhelmed because there's an army force of 256,000 coming from this side, Galicia, and another 384,000 coming from this side. Oh boy. Um, this is not exactly what I was hoping for. So what can I do? Can I go to peace? Um, no, actually, I can't. I cannot sign a peace treaty. Because I think there hasn't been an actual conflict, believe it or not. The way that the game registers it is there's no victory point exchange. Nothing. So nothing actually seems to have happened. So I'm trying to provoke some sort of a conflict. It's a minor task force, it's just five ships. 
they are here to see control. Um, they're here to try and provoke some conflict with whatever the Austro-Hungarians have left. Um, I'd love it if the 25 light cruisers from here would show up. That'd be a fun fight. But so far, we're just waiting and nothing is happening. And I don't like where this is going. After some prodding, well, I mean, basically moving my fleet on top of theirs, we finally have an encounter. These heavy cruisers of mine are going to have a bit of a fight on their hands. The Gleb and the Alexander Menshikov, armed with 9-inch guns. Um, they're fighting everything that is armed with, don't laugh, 14 4.4s. That's a lot of guns, but they're not very big. So if I can somehow keep these guys at range, I might have some chance. It's not a lot, but it's uh, it's something. There's also a whole bunch of wild fangs. These are pretty speedy, 33 knots, capable of throwing out two torpedoes and some gunfire. They're not that dangerous. Now, I did push everything into crew training, um, but it's not to be. My crews are green. The crews on these guys are trained, so they're the level above me. This is going to be a tough fight. To make matters worse, there's one more complicating factor. It is nighttime. This is <laughs> going to make things so much more difficult. Um, the nighttime accuracy is minus 34%. It also means detecting things is generally impossible. I don't have radar. Um, it's 1904. We're going to be using the Mark I eyeball and hoping that we'll be able to take a couple of shots at these things before they just swarm me because that's what I think will happen and when they swarm me they'll also be in torpedo range I don't like either elements um, it's going to be a really tough fight amusingly I cannot see the Austro-Hungarian fleet but I can hear them all crashing into each other <laughs> oh and they're all smoking up at the same time look at that that is a lot of ships um, <laughs> because of all the smoke they have lost line of sight <laughs> to me because of their own smoke screens okay this is funny um, yeah they're like two and a half clicks out it's night time and they're smoking up I cannot see anything uh, it's like fighting in the dark but worse because Normally, the enemy is at least going to be something that you can point a gun at. Right now, I just... Well, I can see a smoke screen. And that's basically it. Here we go. Tar no. Target? No? No target? It's like not even the game knows what it's doing. Because sometimes it goes, yeah, no, there's a target out there. Um, it just pops into view and then it doesn't. I know the torpedo range is about three, so I gotta be careful here. What I'm relying on, mostly, is the armor on these cruisers. Because these guys are pretty well armored. But, you know, extensive fire overwhelm is an extreme risk. And it might strike all of these ships. Because you can have all the armor in the world, and if the enemy has all the four inchers in the world with high explosive ammunition, well soon your armor is going to be irrelevant it's not like you won't have any armor it's just that it won't really do anything contact again it looks like the smoke screens are about to run out and we definitely have eyes on a light cruiser no yeah that's a light cruiser interesting chance to hit's about two and a half percent and I got the five inchers, which are actually far more accurate. Because they're mark... I don't know. I cannot explain why these guns are more accurate. Oh, there we go. 30%. Let's go do some damage against the Austro-Hungarian fleet. Um, if by some miracle I can sink every single ship in this fleet, that's going to give me so many victory points that I might immediately sue for peace. Or they will. Uh, I will accept it. And we're just going to go our merry ways. Me having mostly restored my merchant fleet. And with that, I have a lot more income. And I might be able to prevent the invasion. You know, the land invasion. That's part of the game, but you still cannot do anything about that one. 
First, though, we're going to have to focus on not getting torpedoed. The problem is, these guys have torpedo ranges of 3. 3.3, actually. I think they have bigger... Oh, sorry, that's... <clears throat> 5.1? Never mind. Their torpedoes have gotten a lot better. Oh, sorry. No, I was confused with the Japanese. I'm fighting the Austro-Hungarians. I know nothing about the Austro-Hungarian capabilities yet. Either way, um, generally very dangerous, and more so because it's a night battle, because you simply don't see the torpedoes coming your way. They're there. Trust me, they're there. You just don't see them until they are right on top of you, and they cause a merry explosion. There's another DD. I think we might have to make use of that mechanic where we, you know, accidentally hit something that happens to be in the way. We really need to keep these things off of us. Oh, and that's not the way to do it. You do have torps, dude. Let's go and use them. Because they will run long. Even if we don't hit this one, we might hit something else. That's a DD. There we go. Torps away from that Savordi. There's one incoming as a return package. Do these things also support a whole lot of launchers? No. Like one port, one starboard. That's manageable. It's just the extreme amount of guns that are concerning for me right now. Oh, see, we might actually hit this DD. The Wild Fang 5. But nah, she's probably cleared by then. Nah, she's clear. All right. Yeah, this is going to take me a while. This dancing in the dark. I do have two and a half hours of in-game time, so I have options. But it's tricky. Rejoin. Whoop, 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 whoop. I've done about four times the damage that I've taken. Which, considering the vast numbers that they have, um, on the one hand, isn't... Well, it's not difficult, because you'll point the gun at the target and you'll, you'll hit something when you just pull the trigger. On the other hand, considering their vast numbers, it is actually pretty respectable. Because they simply haven't overwhelmed me yet. Emphasis on yet. Could you stop concealing yourself? Wait, did we hit a torp? Yeah, we landed a torp. I didn't even catch that. Light Cruiser Bosna <clears throat> took a torpedo. Damn it. Ooh, that was juicy. That could kill the cruiser. The D4 has no torpedoes. Charge it. We sunk something? Okay. Auto load. Or rather, auto select. Come on. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Don't do that. I mean, I know you're going to, but don't. Art port. Increase the flank speed. Dodge that torp. Do not get hit by that torpedo. Good man. Very good man. Uh, now, I need you to rejoin this division. And we're going to focus on the Delta IV. I'm now ahead by 8,000 points. Well, not victory points, but damage. That's some good flooding. That's the stuff I'm looking for. How am I going to make a thumbnail out of this? It's very difficult for me as a content creator to get a thumbnail out of a night battle. Because it, you'll just see, well, largely nothing. Okay, so these are now pure gunboats and can be sunk swiftly. They only cost 3 million, as opposed to my 4.8. Wow. 50% more expensive. Jesus. That accuracy, though. One kilometer, we still can't hit it. Start targeting this. Yeah, that'll kill it. There's Bosna. There's that destroyer down. There's plenty more where those destroyers come from, but... If they just keep sending one single ship at a time... I'll send it to the bottom every single time. They do 19 and a half knots. I do slightly more... Jesus, even at 400 meter range, you can't hit? 
I'm thinking of just doing some damage and disengaging, but I'm not sure if that will work. We're firing high explosive? Huh. They got some pretty decent armor on that. Group 1. What do I have? I also got group 1. Never mind. Go on. Flood it. What? Oh, Jesus. That torpedo blew itself up. Yeah, you're gone. Nice. So far, four targets eliminated. Plenty, plenty, plenty more. We're dealing some good damage against some of these cruisers. Like Cruiser Teodo. Already taken some flooding. Three engines were out. No longer. I have about 700 to 800 rounds left per heavy cruiser. So I should be able to keep this fight going for a while. Hold on. The DDs... Oh, they're, they're battle-lined. They're not actually following the division. All right. <clears throat> Take out this, this uh, lights cruiser. We are in its torpedo range. Keep a very close eye on these bars. Because they're definitely interested in taking a torpedo launch. Ooh, beautiful. The fact that these things have maximum bulkheads does make them a little bit more difficult to sink. But not impossible. There goes a main gun. Price? 11 million. My heavies? No, what does my light cost? 19 million. And the Gleb? 58. Jesus. They're not exactly cheap ships. These guys. End the battle. Tempting. But no. Not yet. I feel we can still do a lot more than just this. Here comes the next wave. That looks like another CL. No, that's a DD. Or a torpedo boat. No, that's a DD. All right. Don't get too close to these guys because they will mess you up. So far, I've done 63,000 points of damage versus 1,400 damage taken. These cruisers and destroyers, let's not discount the DDs because the Tsvorji did 60, no, yeah, 6.9k damage with a torpedo and her main guns. These destroyers are not exactly my favorite, um, but they pack a lot of firepower with those 5.1s. And it's coming in extremely useful right about now. Yep, that's kind of what I was expecting. And I think I might not be able to dodge that. No, this is going to hurt. <clears throat> well, it's going to be extremely tight. Yeah, that hit. All right, let's see how bad the flooding on the gleb is going to get. Two compartments for now. More problematically, it'll impair my ability to get out. Focus on the wounded one. Focus on the one behind everybody else. See? <laughs> yes. That's it. Rudder damaged. Engines damaged. The best part is, I'm sinking all of these ships in the home territory of the Austro-Hungarian Navy. It's not even their backyard, it's their front yard. There goes another. No, wait, that was not the D2. There goes the D2. Good damage on whatever that is. Switch to the satellite. See, now they're going to start setting me on fire. This is where it gets dangerous. Because this is when I'm inside the range of those 4.1s. And not just a few... But it's the guns from the satellite, the Gamma, and whatever else they got over there. That's a lot of gun power. And that's potentially quite, quite dangerous. Why are you in that division? Get over here. Rinda, smoke everybody up. Oh boy! Big hit on the Rinda. That's bad news. Might not be able to come back from that. 
I can lose one light cruiser, though, in exchange for, like, ten of theirs. Come on, get some damage in. It's like they're all suddenly charging me. Including destroyers and torpedo boats and all sorts of nonsense. There goes the Tsvorji. Boom! Boom. Let's flash fires as these things explode. The Gleb is playing an extremely dangerous game as it's trying to fall back into formation. I can't exactly approve of this. Good lord. Yeah, we might need to re-engineer those things. Oh, Jesus, there's more. How many guns do you still have left? Oh, none of them. They all left. Okay. I'm not sure why the D7 is not launching against me. Arguably it should, but it's targeting this this heavy cruiser. Idiot. Oh, the Delta 9 got in the way. Sucks to be you. Switch fire. New target is Gamma. I have lost both of my DDs in spectacular fashion. My CL is not doing very well. But it's alive. And I have done... I don't know. I've done a lot of damage, but I'm not sure how many ships I've actually eliminated. You're probably going to have flooding issues. Come on. We can get a lot of things out of this battle. <clears throat> yeah, satellite's gone. Switch to Sava. Ooh, Gleb dodged the Torp. Not because of anything I did. This is going to be one big artificial reef at this point. Switch to Fogos. Flooding on the Gamma. Can I just try and disengage this CL? Even at what, 6 knots? 10 knots. 10 knots is acceptable. Zrinyi. And Tun are going down. Jeez, it's one big cluster. It's like a light cruiser trimaran at this point. What are you doing? I shoot this. I hit the other two. Watch. Oh, I'm running out of AP shells here. No, I'm running out of HE shells? Why are we even shooting with HE? It does not make a whole lot of sense. Gleb's loading her guns. There's the shot. Boink, boink. That was the Kornuberg. Did not hit the Fogus yet. Flooding on Gamma. Gamma's suffering. 4%, 3%, 0 0.8, she's gone. Nice. <clears throat> Rinda is still trying to disengage. Struggling. Alexander Menshikov. Can you take out this comet? Oh, there's the Sava again. Boom. That was good damage on Phobos. The Rinda and the Gleb are passing each other if you look at it in a line. So the Rinda is going to take a lot of damage. Which is unfortunate, but I'll accept it. Ooh! Fogus is getting murdered by this heavy. Yeah, this is done. This is dead. Next is Rinyi. What are you trying to hit? Because you got the Sava posturing here. I don't appreciate it. Boom! Torpedo launcher gone. Flooding on the ship. This is going to be such a crazy win for me. Probably tens of thousands of victory points. Sava. Taking some damage. I'm keeping a very close eye on the Sava and her torpedo launchers. 
Is it in ye? Suffering? Might go down. <clears throat> yeah, there she goes. Switch. Kornberg. Ooh, Sava. That's excellent. Alexander Menshikov has done 50,000 points of damage. The Gleb, 48,000. These heavy cruisers? Well, I've changed my mind about them. Initially, I thought they were pretty bad. I no longer think that. Oh. Yeah, target the Sava. You also target the Sava. Sava, target the one behind. That's the objective. Because you'll sink the one in front. There she goes. Comma taking flooding. Boom. Boom. And now we get two cruisers for the price of one, pretty much. There she goes. Once I've sunk these, I'll call it a day. I will disengage. And I will get my ships back to port for repairs. Oh, you're done. I think my crews are going to get a ton of experience out of this one as well. Go on. Yeah, that's a bit of flooding. That's more flooding. She's probably dead. Damage done. The five inches did 65,000 points of damage. That's more than the nines. That's really impressive. It also, however, includes the five inch guns on the DDs. So when it comes to the Gleb, yeah, look at that. The 5 inches did twice the damage compared to the lines. Here, not so much. End the battle. Damn, this was a good fight. 25,000 victory points versus 1,600. The Austro-Hungarians are going to be pissed. They sent in 25 light cruisers and 13 DDs. So we're looking at 38 ships and then... One torpedo boat. So they sent in 39 and they lost 19. Damn. Let's see how they want to treat the war now. Is this going to make them change their mind? And indeed, it is. They desperately ask us to sign a peace treaty. Yes, I would like to. <laughs> I would like to very much before everything gets invaded. Um, also, my technology is behind, so that's fun. Now, I do have my fleet over here. Um, I pulled every single ship together in the Sea of Japan. My battleships, seven heavies, two lights, and 11 DDs. And the Austro-Hungarian Navy just went, eh, that's cute. But we just completely ignore that? I'm not sure how they did that. Uh, there is... There's more than one fleet here. There's a little line behind it. There's an Austro-Hungarian fleet behind it. There's probably another one on the way. Yeah, 14 heavies. If the Austro-Hungarian peace treaty fails, I'll be forced to fight them as well. But I think we can manage something. Why did they suddenly gain 15,000 victory points? Oh god, did they invade something and actually get away with it? That would be horrific. Because I was hopeful that this war was going to be over. Pretty much now. At this rate? If they... Uh-oh. Oh boy. They took Ukraine? <laughs> well, there goes my income. <sighs> yeah, this backfired a little. Um, okay. We got another clash of fleets. I don't want to. No, thank you. Oh boy. And here's the other one. That's the group of heavy cruisers and the torpedo boats. This is going to be happening in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what your thoughts are. And I'll see you soon for the next one.